Um, good afternoon. My name is Ring Wang from HKUST, and this work um, I'm going to present is a collaborative work with Professor Xiao Jun Ma, um, Chung Luo, and Hua Ming Chu um, from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, um, HCI Lab. So um, we know data communication is an essential component of data science. So existing methods, including data visualization, sonification, physicalization, and so on. And this brings us to think, um, besides vision, hearing, um, and touching, can we also incorporate smell and taste to provide an integrated data communication experience? Um, therefore, we propose the concept of data edibilization, um, which use different attributes of edible materials. For example, as we can see in the picture, the different types of peppers with different colors and shapes can be used to present categorical data, while the intensity of spicy taste measured by Scoville heat scale can be used to present continuous data. To understand how users may explore, experience, interpret, and perceive data edibilization, we conducted a data tasting workshop with 15 volunteers. We experienced and um, they experienced and compared data visualization designs with common visualization of three different data sets. And the first data set is about how Asian Americans identify themselves. Um, we use cheese with different flavors and colors to represent whether they consider themselves as a typical American, a very different American, or in between. We find our pa um, participants from Asian countries, like the flavor represents Asian origins better. The second data set is about the number of annual STEM degree earners with the number of annual STEM job offerings. Um, the, the edibilization takes the form of a salad with the quantity of different ingredients encoding the value of each category. Um, in particular, we use bitter augular leaf to present PhD, um, diced sour um, tomatoes to represent masters, sweet coins to represent bachelors, uh, um, salty hams to represent associate, and um, bread crumbs to represent available jobs. The participants com comment that they can really resonate with the edibilization when they tasted the bitterness of PhD. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the third data set is the employment rate of um, agriculture in four Asian countries. Um, we employ diff um, typical source of each country, um, inclu include broad bean source from China, curry spread, wasabi paste, and chim um, kimchi dip. The participants enjoyed guessing the countries without looking at the descriptions of the data edibilization. So from the participants' feedback, we summarize six advantages of data edibilization. First of all, um, food is, um, food is um, naturally attractive to humans as a means of survival. Um, it can stimulate people's desire to explore, especially when the food is aesthetically pleasing or when our audience are hungry. The second advantage is um, edibilization can leverage both explicit attributes um, like um, color, shape, volume to provide um, public information. And it can also provide implicit attributes such as smell, taste, sound, and texture. And it can be served as carriers for secretive or subtle messages. Um, in addition, edibilization can also leverage intangible assets of edible ingredients, such as culture, time, location, season of production, nutrition, brand, personal, and social meanings. One participant from Thailand mentioned that um, it would be very interesting to him um, that we use um, some um, data set from Thailand and we put some Thai curry or fish sauce on the plate. 
um, force, our particip participants pointed out several factors that can make atomization more memorable than normal visual charts, such as um, novelty, integrated sensory arousal, the um, metaphor, um, such as bread to job and self resonant. Um, this suggests that edibilization can um, exert a more enduring effect than other types of data representations, which may um, be potentially benefit uh, application domains such as education and marketing. Um, good food can arouse positive emotions and the feelings of satisfaction. Um, people enjoy the process of exploring data edibilization. For example, desert lovers will be interested in trying this fruit waffle that use different syrups to encode data. Um, last but not least, the edibilization also demonstrates its ability to encourage social interactions. For example, um, family and friends enjoy chatting at the dining table. Uh, data are often arranged at lunch and dinner, dinner time. Conference attendees usually socialize during coffee breaks. People also socialize around edibilization given common practice of food sharing. This picture is taken at the Lantern Festival gathering of our lab. We use different fillings of rice balls and the soups to encode the academic achievements of the past semester. Some of the information are only known by these individuals, such as the sweetness level of the soup. However, through our data edibilization practices, um, we also identified some limitations and challenges. For example, um, the understandability of edibilization can be affected by food literacy of users and their sensory um, capabilities. Also, since food can perish over time, people may also have health concerns and dietary constraints. Some edibilization design might not scale and endure well. Therefore, data edibilization might only be applicable and beneficial in certain scenarios. However, with the development of enabling technologies, edibilization has the potential to break these constraints and have wider applications. One of these technology is um, intelligent food production, such as automatic food um, appliance. Another breakthrough can come from data-driven recipe creation. For example, IBM Chef Watson extracted food pairing principles and create new recipes empowered by artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. In addition, 3D printing can also be used to create cooking tools and utensils used to produce and display edibilization designs. Also, 3D food printing has also demonstrated its potential to tailor meals. We propose three pragmatic process of data edibilization. Food-based approach modifies existing recipes of common foods and dishes. And data-driven approach creates novel edible representations unconstricted by existing recipes. Hybrid approach combines the two methods. Um, inspired by existing studies in related areas, HCI research can contribute to um, different aspects of data edibilization. For example, um, designing algorithms that map data attributes to sensory properties, um, building models that describe the design space of edibilization, developing systems that realize data edibilization, and experimenting potential um, application domains and evaluation, evaluation methods. So to conclude, um, data edibilization is a, a new concept and it uses edible materials to convey stories in data. Um, it is uh, not a replacement of visualization, physicalization, sonification, and so on. Edibilization can be used in conjunction with other representations to provide richer experiences with data. 
we conduct a preliminary study to explore advantages and challenges. And um, we summarized enabling techniques and future directions. So in the future, we plan to conduct more systematic experiments to in investigate how people may interact with data atomization. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yun, for your presentation. Do we have any questions from the audience? Would you mind walking up to the mic, please, and introduce yourself and then ask your question? Hello, uh, my name is Carlos, Hi. and I come from Malaysia, Imagine Green Institute. So my question is, did you explore the role of homeostasis in data interpretation? I mean, if people are hungry, probably they're going to interpret. <laughs> put in a different way. Uh, yeah. And the other question is, did you explore individual differences, given that there are lots of individual differences when it comes to food for preference, for example? Thank, Thank you. you. A very good question. Um, for the first one, um, I think hungry is a very important um, element that we need to consider, um, because we actually conducted our um, study on about 11 a.m. So some of the participants say that um, they are already hungry, so they want to have a taste of these cheese cubes. So, um, but we have not conducted some um, uh, uh, detailed uh, studies about uh, how hungry they are, and we may explore it um, in the future. And for the second question, um, yes, um, individual, um, individuals have their own uh, interpretation of, um, of food and taste. Um, so our data idealization is um, mostly um, aimed at this um, information showing, but not very, uh, very um, detailed or uh, detailed data of uh, the data sets. So um, we may uh, <coughs> explore this kind of um, uh, topics in the future. Thank you. Do we have another question from the audience? Yes? Hi, uh, my name is Sean. Uh, I'm from a Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Uh, I was just wondering if you did anything using palate cleansers or if any, anything along those lines? For instance, with like the example of peppers, I imagine that if you don't give enough time between or some way to kind of clear out the flavor, if I ate like the spiciest pepper first, mm -hmm. it would be very difficult for me afterwards to, to have any inference of what the less spicy peppers mean because I'm still just going to taste how uh, the, the spiciest pepper will linger in my mouth. Uh, yes, so thank you, you for your question. Do you have any techniques to kind of um, deal with this issue? Yes, we've surveyed some um, techniques to measure um, this um, uh, bitterness or spicy. Um, but um, I think um, because, mm, sorry. Uh, because um, it is only in the very early stage of our um, research, um, we think that um, it can affect users' experience, especially when they taste this kind of um, spicy food. And this is actually uh, constraints. And um, so we may uh, put this in, in our research agenda and explore in the future. Thanks. Phil Wadler, University of Edinburgh. I have a question and a comment. Uh, also, I mean, this was amazing, right? This was great fun. But you don't seem to have the conviction uh, of what you're saying. You're showing us slides. You're speaking to us. Why aren't you feeding us? <laughs> Sorry. I, I <laughs> You've shown us slides. Uh -huh. You've spoken to us. Yeah. Why are you not feeding us? Where's the food, oh, Yon? So I, I understand because we fly from. 
<laughs> you know, we cannot bring so many food. And this, this also, um, we also consider this and because there are some scalability problem and um, the enabling technologies are also not developed so well. Um, we <laughs> so we think um, in the future maybe everyone can put this kind of edibleization when they present um, present data with food. But um, at this stage, it may be not so convenient for for me. Okay, next time. <laughs> uh, the comment is this: you didn't talk about cultural roots of what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and I suggest you look at those. So for instance, in Judaism, um, you hold a Seder every year to celebrate Passover. This is a big meal, and the meal is carefully designed to reinforce the message of the Seder. So for instance, at one point you eat bitter herbs to remember the bitterness of slavery in Egypt, and very similar to what you were doing with the bitter PhD. So <laughs> I, I think you can find actual cultural roots for these ideas, and I suggest you explore that. Thank you. Uh, I have a question and another question. Um, did you uh, think about, like, I mean, people love to eat, and if this is now going to be a way for us to interpret data, uh, what if I'm just eating breakfast and I'm like, oh, man, this is telling me that, you know, the stock prices have gone up or something, instead of just me eating breakfast, because I'm used to now interpreting data through food? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So. If I, if I am now using food to represent data, and every day all I do is I look at uh, bacon charts and pie, pie graphs, um, and now when I eat bacon or have pie, I'm going to think, oh man, this has to do with the, I don't know, distribution of, you know, how the housing market or something completely irrelevant, and I'm going to lose enjoyment for the food itself. Oh. I think maybe people will losing this kind of um, uh, interest in this design, but this is why we need um, more studies or research and exploration of data idealization. You know, um, for example, for data visualization, we have um, many commonly used pie chart and bar chart um, to represent data. It is very easy for people to. Um, understand and also we use more complex ones to present more um, complex data um, so we may explore more interesting or novel advertisement designs to um, always make you interested in um, eating these kind of um, edible products yeah so my other question was like what if you're full and you need to like analyze some data. Yeah, just wait till you're hungry again, go for a run. Yes, it is also a constraint. Okay. We also consider this and um, discuss in our paper. So you thank may you. refer to, yeah, thank you.